Hey, what's going on folks? This is Keith and you're watching Barber's Auto Help. Thank you so much for watching. In today's video, I'm going to go over the procedure for replacing the valve cover gasket on a 2012 to 2018 Ford Focus equipped with a Duratec 2.0. Now this procedure I know will work for the Focus. However, this engine is used in several other vehicles that Ford makes. I'm not so sure that it's going to be exactly the same for those other models. However, it should be similar. So you may be able to glean some information that could help you with that project as well. Now, right off the bat, I'm not using a repair manual. I'm just going to show you how I replace this gasket here. And I'm not going to provide any torque specs or anything like that. So I, I do apologize. You will need a repair manual for that information. But there's plenty of information here that you can glean. And that should be very useful for your project. So starting out, you want to go ahead and disconnect the negative clamp on your battery and your battery is found on the driver's side up underneath this cover here the negative clamp is found in the rear of the battery go ahead and disconnect the clamp and isolate it from the battery all right once you got that taken care of we need to go ahead and turn our attention to moving this wire harness out of the way and what you want to do is go ahead and start disconnecting your sensors and your electrical connectors uh, this right here is your camshaft position sensor what we're going to do is we're just going to push down on this little tang right here and that's going to release that clip we're going to pull out just like that on the ignition coils here we're going to pull back on this white tab push down on it like this we're actually squeezing this connector pull right out same thing with this one same same now you can see that this camshaft position sensor is already missing but this one disconnects in the same manner and we want to go ahead and remove our breather tube here from the valve cover and the way i did that is i just pulled this i kind of pushed that that way like that and that allows it to be released from the rib on the valve cover you just pull it straight off and now we got our vct solenoids we want to disconnect those we got to unlock them first push back on these purple tangs here right, once you got them unlocked take and squeeze this down like that and pull back on the connector don't pull on the wires like i just did pull, pull back on the uh, connector you don't want to damage your connector by pulling the wires out of it there you go like that let's go ahead and remove our dipstick all right, right here, what we're going to do is we're going to take these uh, and pull them up off of the studs here. Like that. There's one right here, too. Pull that one right up, just like that. All right, so we've got that loose. And we're going to pull this one up back here also, just like that. Now... We need to remove our ignition coils and these are eight millimeter heads on these bolts that hold the ignition coils down we're going to go ahead and remove those once the bolts are removed you can pull straight up on the ignition coils like so now we need to disconnect our cylinder head temperature sensor which is right up under here we're just going to pull this cover back a little bit here pull up on it it may help to put a little pocket screwdriver down in there pry up on it be kind of gentle when you do that now inside there there's another electrical connector with a lock tang on it you know push in on the lock tang and i'll show you what i'm doing once i get it out push in on it and then pull up on the connector i don't know you couldn't see me do that but what i did is i pushed in on this lock tang right here and that released it from the cylinder head temperature sensor and I just pulled straight up. So at this point right here, we have another stud that we need to remove the harness from right there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pull up our harness and just kind of push it out of the way right there. We're gonna tuck it behind this little eyelet right here. I'm gonna tuck this back this way. Oh, there's another stud right here that you need to remove the harness from. I forgot to mention that pull that up like that and then you can pull the whole harness up over this fuel line right here just kind of gently sit it off to the side there there now all of that stuff is out of the way and we got a straight shot to the valve cover here now one thing i do want to bring your attention to 
I'm sure you can see that it's lubricated around these VCT solenoids right here. What I did is I added a little oil to those seals prior to actually starting this video here. You may want to do the same thing with a little bit of motor oil. Just kind of lubricate it. Uh, that's going to help in the process of removing this valve cover from the head there. Something else I want to bring your attention to also, you can see I had a leaf over here and I got some dirt and grime and stuff uh, around this area here. Um, before we actually removed anything on this, we probably should have taken some shop air and just kind of blown it off. Uh, be sure that you have everything covered up, your throttle body, be sure your dipstick's in, your coils are in and all that stuff. Just kind of blow everything off and make sure you don't have any dirt that might fall into the, uh, the cylinder head whenever you take the valve cover off. Okay, so now we can go ahead and start loosening our bolts that hold the valve cover to the cylinder head. On the inside run here, we have one, two, three bolts. On the outside here, we have one, two, three, four, five bolts. On the front here, we have one right there. And then on the back side, we have one, two, three, four, and five bolts. Now, what I like to do whenever I loosen up the bolts on a valve cover, I like to do kind of a spiral pattern going from the inside out. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start with this one and just kind of work my way out like this until they're all loose. And some of these studs here, you will need a deep well socket for because they have kind of a, a long shank on the head of them. And if I didn't mention it already, these are eight millimeter heads. Helps to have an extension for this one right here. And it may help you if you remove the sound shield off of the uh, high pressure fuel pump there. That may help you a little bit better to get to that, that bolt there. And also on the back here, there is a bolt that holds this bracket that attaches to the fuel line here. We need to take that bolt out right there. And then this bracket just kind of spins out of the way. Like that. You don't have to take any lines off or anything like that. And also, this uh, low pressure fuel delivery line that is supposed to be on this nipple right here you don't have to remove that either you can actually work around that okay so now that we have all of our bolts loose and we're sure that there's no threads in the head on any of these bolts here we're going to go ahead and start prying our valve cover off uh, the first place i like to pry on is right down here there's a little ear that you can put your pry bar on and get up underneath the valve cover like so and just pry right up on the valve cover just a little by little we're not going to totally go crazy with it. We're just going to kind of ease the valve cover off little by little. Now on the back here, there's also another ledge that you can put a pry bar on. We're just going to kind of pull up on it like so. It's not so easy to get a pry bar on the back side here uh, when the engine's in the vehicle, but you could use like a seal puller as shown here. You can, you can still get on that ear there and pry up on this area right here. I'm just going to go ahead and get a screwdriver up in there and kind of work that up a little bit. Right, we're going to hold our position with this screwdriver here and work our pry bar on the front again. We're just going to go back and forth. I'm just going to shimmy it up. And once you got it moving, go ahead and start working it loose back here as well. All right, so that's loose. Your main obstacle is getting the valve cover off of these VCT solenoids right here. Once you got it past that, it's basically home free. Now, as mentioned, once you get past the VCT solenoids right there, you just lift up on the valve cover like so. We're just gonna lift up on the back side here, work it loose, and then we're just gonna slide the valve cover out this way. just like so. Now, a couple of things I'd like to bring your attention to. Uh, you don't want to pry on the inside of this gasket area right here. Uh, I don't recommend it anyway. I don't think you're really going to mess anything up because the sealing surface of the gasket is actually inside that inlay in the valve cover. So if you do mar this area up, it's not really going to, I don't think it's really going to hurt anything, but I, I like to stay on the outside area here. I like to pry right in this area, out on the outside ledge here on this lip in those areas. Uh, back here, this, this part right here, there's a nice little ledge that you can pry on. This actually lives right here as the valve cover's on 
the actual cylinder head there. And then the outside lip of the inlay area all along the valve cover, you can pry in those areas as well. And this part right here, which actually lives right in the front, this is a good area to pry on as well. If you can get like a hook in there or maybe a seal puller or something like that, you can uh, grab onto the ledge there and kind of pry up on it if you need to. Now, a couple of things you want to be cognizant of uh, while you're prying up on that valve cover there, you don't want to mar the mating surface on the cylinder head where that gasket actually seals up to the cylinder head. So if at all possible, try to stay outside of that area when you're prying. These bolt holes right here, you can get in with a screwdriver right there in this area, pry up on that with no problem, pry up this, this area, no problem. Um, you're really not gonna hurt anything, but the goal here is to take this valve cover off without marring up your mating surfaces. So just be cognizant of that and watch out for that. Now there are actually a few pieces that are included with this valve cover set. This is the valve cover set right here. This is the part number. This is actually a Ford part number. I would of course recommend going with a Ford part for this repair here, but it includes several pieces. You have a spark plug tube seal right here. I don't know if you want to call that a tube or not. And then you got one that goes in the center here and then one on the very end here. And then you got your main gasket that goes all around the outside edge of the valve cover, which that's still stuck in the valve cover. And of course you have your VCT solenoid seals that seal around the VCT solenoid as well. So at this point right here, guys, we wanna turn our attention to cleaning our mating surfaces. You can see around the outside edge here where the valve cover mates, there's a little bit of dirt and grime and stuff. And of course on the inside here where the valve cover uh, spark plug tube seals are, uh, you wanna clean around those areas too. What you wanna do is take a lint-free rag and just wipe those areas down really good. And a little trick that helps is spraying your lint-free rag down with some brake clean to start out with and that kind of speeds things up pretty good for you there so we're going to go ahead and wipe this down really well and get it nice and clean and when we're wiping we don't want to accidentally knock any dirt and grime into the engine itself so just be aware of that try not to do that okay see how i'm kind of wiping out away from the engine there i'm going to keep that dirt and stuff out of the engine So we got it wiped down pretty well so far, but you can probably still notice there's a little bit of staining where that uh, valve cover gasket mates with the cylinder head there. And we'll take care of that here in just a minute. But I do want to bring your attention to a couple of points here, or actually three points uh, right here, here, and actually two points back here, four points, excuse me. Um, there's RTV that's used on those surfaces. This is where the front engine cover mates with the cylinder head. And you're supposed to put a little dollop of... Uh, RTV in that area there to assist in sealing up that surface well and the same thing for each corner of this little cap right here That's just before the high-pressure fuel pump drive There's supposed to be a little bit of RTV in those areas as well now a lot of times people recommend using just like a plastic scraper in these areas and when you do scrape this stuff off you want to be careful make sure that the RTV falls outside of the engine just like the dirt and the grime you don't want to get RTV into the engine there just to be safe but a plastic scraper works pretty well there, but I like to use, I like to use a plain razor blade. And the reason I like to use a plain razor blade is because it works a lot quicker and it does a lot better job. Now, whenever you do use a plain razor blade, you wanna make sure that it's a brand new razor blade. It's nice and clean and it hasn't been used before and you'll have better luck with that. Now you can gouge up the surface by using a metal razor blade like the one seen here, if you don't use caution. I used one all the time at work. I even actually used them on cylinder head deck surfaces and stuff, and, and I get by with it pretty well. But the goal is to not gouge the surface or the mating surface. And if you keep a good enough angle on the razor blade as you're scraping, you shouldn't really have any problem. But as always, use it at your own risk. If you decide to use a regular razor blade, do it at your own risk. If you don't feel confident that you can do this without scraping up the mating surface, use a, a plastic razor blade or a plastic scraper. But we need to go ahead and clean up this area or all of those areas that I told you about and get them nice and clean. And then we'll move on. Now back here, it's not that easy to get to. Um, actually, a pocket screwdriver can help you out pretty well. You just got to use caution and use care when you're 
using a pocket screwdriver on this area, but I'm going to use my plastic uh, trim tool for this area right here. Just kind of work that uh, RTV out there. And get it nice and clean. Plastic trim tool like this works pretty well. Now going back to all this staining and such, just a plain old green scouring pad works really great for this. And I actually recommend washing some dishes with it first and then rinsing it out really well. Um, it, it does kind of start out kind of hard. So there's a little bit of scratching that's gonna go on here, but uh, it, it does pretty well. And I've done this before with no problem. Um, but you just take and you just scrub those areas that have the staining on it and it will pull the staining right up for you. Uh, same thing for these areas right here on the uh, front of the engine where the front cover comes into contact with the cylinder head. Uh, sometimes that RTV can be a little stubborn and the Brillo pad will get it right up. And back here where this cap is, just hit the corners with the Brillo pad really well. And then the entire mating surface, including where the spark plug tubes are uh, or spark plug openings, whatever you want to call that. They're not really spark plug tubes, excuse me. But uh, just get all that staining up and just get a really nice, clean mating surface. So something else I want to bring your attention to while we're here, uh, these VCT solenoids, the outside of them gets a little bit oxidized and that can affect your, your sealing surface where that seal goes over it there. So I like to take the Brillo pad to this as well. You know, put a little bit of penetrating oil on this it would help out just a little bit and just kind of work it around that VCT solenoid and get all that oxidization off. All right, so once you're done with your Brillo pad and you got all your staining and grime up, I would take another lint-free rag, soak it with some brake clean, and just wipe down your surfaces once more. And then after that, you let the brake clean dry and such. Take another lint-free rag and put some isopropyl alcohol on it, and then wipe down your mating surfaces with that as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn our attention to the actual valve cover. We're going to go ahead and prep it and get it ready to install. But first, what we got to do is get rid of these seals here and also any other gaskets that might be still in the uh, the valve cover there and then we got to get rid of our main valve cover gasket so we're just going to take a little pick and right here we're just going to uh, pick it right out and we're going to use care not to actually mar the valve cover when we do that we're just going to dig into the gasket itself and pull it up and then we're just going to pull it right out like so and these, the spark plug tube seals or the spark plug seals, uh, they, they actually stayed on the head for the most part. I think this one stayed in the valve cover. You just pick that out as well. Now on these VCT seals here, you'll notice before you take them out that they're actually flush with the top of the valve cover. I'll give you a close up of that right there. They're not... They're not under the actual plane of the top of the valve cover right there, and they don't protrude above it. So when we go back in with our new ones, we want it to sit the same way in the valve cover there. Now, to get these out, it's real simple. And you notice I got this on a piece of uh, OSB. Um, you, you probably want to do this on a soft surface just to ensure that you don't damage the valve cover accidentally. We're going to go ahead and take a screwdriver, and then we're going to Put it right on the lip here of that seal. And what we're going to do is we're just going to bang it out with a hammer. Like so. Now, when I did that, I just had it actually on the seal itself. I didn't gouge this surface right here or damage the valve cover in any way. Well, actually, I got a little bit of damage right there, but that's not where it actually seals. It seals on this part on the inside, actually right in this area right here. But I did gouge it just a little bit right there. But uh, do as I say, don't do as I do. Just FYI, be careful. Try not to damage it, okay? So we're going to go ahead and knock out our other one here. I 
think I did a little bit of a better job on that one there. Now, something that may help you to not gouge that surface there, when you're knocking it out, don't angle it towards the valve cover. Maybe angle it towards the inside like that. Angle your screwdriver, that is. And that way, if it does go anywhere, it will go to the inside of the seal and not towards the outside of the seal there and mar that surface up a little bit. Now, you don't have to use a screwdriver to do this. You could actually use a socket that will fit precisely on the lip of that seal there and just kind of put it over the seal like so and hammer the socket down through the valve cover and thus knocking out the seal. That might actually be a better way to do that, but this way works as well. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to clean all the oil off the inside of this valve cover and also in this these inlaid areas where the gaskets sit in the valve cover we want to make sure that this thing is perfectly clean and perfectly dry before we go put our new gasket in there but before we do that you may want to take a razor blade and get rid of the rtv right here at the end of the uh, the valve cover there so kind of pick that out try not to scratch the uh, the valve cover while you're at it just get the uh, just get the RTV off it. Okay, let's go ahead and spray this out. Let's go ahead and spray the top part of our valve cover off as well. I do try not to spray inside the uh, connectors of the uh, camshaft position sensors. Of course, you know this one's missing right here, but I just try not to spray inside there, if at all possible. Now, at this point here, it may not hurt to take some compressed air, kind of blow this off really well and get it nice and dry, especially the inside of the inlaid areas here. You want it bone dry before you go in with your new gasket. The drier, the better, because the drier it is, the better it's going to hold your gasket in place. All right, at this point, we want to take our new VCT solenoid seals and go ahead and install them. And you can almost put them in by hand, to tell you the truth. They're pretty, pretty easy to install. Go ahead and get them started there. Push down on it. Now, once you get it to that point there and it's pretty well started, take a rubber mallet, something soft. Just kind of tap it in, nice and easy, even blows all the way around. And you want to make sure that the top of the seal is flush with the top of the valve cover, just like I showed you before. This needs to be totally flush all the way around. And it is best to put them in evenly all the way down. Sometimes you can get it cocked a little bit in there. It's not such a big deal. Just uh, apply a little pressure on the opposite side and make it even again. Now when I'm hitting that seal, I'm not actually just aiming for the seal. I'm actually aiming for the top of the valve cover as well. That way when I hit it, I know that it will stop where the uh, top of the valve cover is. That way I don't overdo it. there and that's looking pretty good all right so we dirtied it up just a little bit so before you put your valve cover gasket on and your uh, spark plug tube seals or spark plug seals in go ahead and spray it down with some brake clean again and then blow it off with some, some compressed air then we'll go ahead and put our valve cover gaskets back in there okay so let's go ahead and put our gaskets in now you can see i got a little bit of condensation inside here um, mainly what you're concerned about, you want to make sure that it's nice and clean all over, of course, and pretty dry. But mainly what I'm concerned about is this inlay portion right here. You want to make sure that the inside of that is bone dry all the way around. That way it grabs onto your gasket a little bit better. We'll go ahead and start with our inner one here. And you can see that the, the gasket's kind of funky shaped. It's shaped just like the uh, inlaid area of the valve cover is shaped. And it goes in the corresponding shape there it's just like when we were uh three years old we put, gotta put the shape in the hole <laughs> so 
this one right here. And now this one right here, guys, there is a little keyway right there. And I suppose it's possible to get this gasket mixed up and put it on the wrong way, but it actually won't really won't go on very well that way. But there's a little keyway in the valve cover right there that receives this little nub. So you gotta make sure that that goes where that keyway is. Now, when you get your valve cover gasket, um, it can be kind of confusing which way goes which way, of course. But um, you see that little half moon shape right there? Of course, that's going to go down here where the corresponding shape is. And we're going to go ahead and put that in there and just work it all the way around. All right. Now, once you get it in there, just go around it one more time. Just push it in, make sure it's nice and seated all the way around. You don't want this thing to accidentally fall out on you, so that way you don't pinch it and not actually seal things up. Uh, that's actually happened before, of course. Um, so you just want to make sure that your gasket is totally seated and is secure in the valve cover there. Okay, so we're just about ready to put this thing back on. Okay, so before we put our valve cover back on, we want to turn our attention again to the mating surface here, right here and here where the front cover meets the cylinder head. We need to seal those areas with some RTV. And then also back here in each corner, we need to apply a little bit of RTV in those areas as well. So we're going to put some RTV right here. You don't need a whole lot, just a little bit. You want to cover the entire length of that line where the front cover mates up with the head on both sides there. Just a little bit will do it. And that might be a little bit overkill on the back there. So before we put our valve cover on, just make sure your harnesses are out of the way and that you're not gonna have anything to hinder your progress here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take our valve cover like this. We're gonna put our fingers in the back side of the valve cover like so, just to kind of keep that gasket seated. And then we're gonna go in kind of like this, okay? If that makes sense. We're gonna go this, the butt end down first, and then we're gonna bring this end down last. Now we gotta get, the valve cover up underneath all of this stuff here so we're going to be very careful to work it under all this stuff here now all the while we're paying attention to the back side of the valve cover we're making sure that that gasket didn't come out or didn't get scraped out and the same thing with your spark plug tube seals here you can put your finger through here and kind of feel to see if they're Kind of hooking it like that by the way you can kind of feel to see if they're still in the inlaid area there and they are and we're good and we're good to go up here as well so you gotta kind of scoop it in under all this junk right here like so all right now before we actually push it on we're just going to go around and we're going to fill to make sure that the gasket is still in. I'm gonna fill our spark plug tube seals as well. We're good to go. All right, now you see that your VCT solenoid seals right here are right over the VCT solenoids and our bolt holes back here are matched up and it looks like everything is good to go. And oh, by the way, I forgot to mention uh, putting a little bit of motor oil around the, uh, the VCT solenoids or on these seals here where it mates up with the VCT solenoids actually helps this thing to go down a little bit easier there. Just a little afterthought. 
Now what we're going to do is we're just going to push down on it. Just like that. And push down, push down, push down. All right. Now going back to our camshaft position sensors, uh, taking those out. And I wanted to show you how this could actually be helpful for you in this instance here. You can see this hole here. You can look down in that hole. You can, you can actually see the part that the valve cover gasket actually mates up to, the little half moon area back there. And you can see if the gasket actually came out or not just by looking down in that hole there. And it appears that we're good to go on ours. So we're going to go ahead and proceed. Now, the same thing can be achieved with this camshaft position sensor as well. You can take it out, you look down in there, and you can look to see if maybe your gasket got jacked up right here. Uh, it's not likely that you did mess up the gasket on this one, though, no, but it never hurts just to check. Now, something else that will help out, too, to ensure that you didn't actually make the gasket slip out or pinch your gasket before you tighten down all the bolts there, you can take a little mirror with a flashlight and just, you know, run your mirror along the back side of the valve cover uh, with the mirror pointed at it and just make sure that your gasket's not coming out and that you can actually see your gasket all the way around the valve cover there. All right, so we got our valve cover seated totally. Now, what we want to do... Let's go ahead and start some of these bolts by hand here. Actually, let's start, start them all by hand. It's always best to start bolts out by hand. That way you don't run the risk of cross-threading them. And they should go in easy. If you feel a lot of resistance, there might be something wrong. You might need to back up and assess the situation. But we're going to go ahead and run these down. At least get uh, three or four turns out of each bolt. Okay, so we got all of our bolts ran down. Now we need to go ahead and torque them down. And I like to torque them down in the same manner that I loosened them in kind of an outward spiral pattern like so. So we're going to start with this bolt here. And we're just going to work our way around. Okay, once I have them all torqued down, I'll go back through again and just double check myself. And this time I just go all the way around. And there we go. Let's go ahead and run our wire harness back down where it's supposed to be. All right, let's go ahead and reconnect our cylinder head temperature sensor. Hear that snap and give it a little bit of a tug there make sure it's secure. Put our seal back on there, our cover back on. Secure our harness all the way around where it was secured before. Let's put our ignition coils back in. Always start your bolts by hand. Let's go ahead and torque down our ignition coils. These don't require a whole lot of torque, just kind of snug. Let's go ahead and reconnect our ignition coils electrically. Give it a little tug, make sure it's secure. You want to hear a little snap when you put it in. Then uh, push the lock in. Give it a little tug, make sure it's secure. Reconnect your camshaft position sensor. And of course, you'll have one on the back side as well. You want to reconnect it just the same way you reconnected that one. Reconnect your VCT solenoids. Lock it. Go. Now let's not forget about our fuel line bracket here. We need to reconnect it as well. Bolt it back down. Snug it down. Then, of course, if you remove the cover for your high pressure fuel pump, you're going to go ahead and put it back on, like so. And then, of course, reinstall your dipstick. And don't forget, reconnect your breather tube and then reconnect the negative battery clamp on your battery. 
You know, if there's anything else you have loose, go ahead and reconnect it or reinstall it at this time. So folks, I sincerely hope that this helped somebody. If it did, please do me a favor and give the video a like and also subscribe to my channel. I really would appreciate that. As always, please read the entire description down below this video before you apply any of this knowledge. There may be some things I need to clarify, and that's where I do that. So please read that along with the disclaimer at the very end of it. Thank you again for watching. Have a great one, guys.